Hey guys, how's it going? In this video, we'll be focusing in on predicting your first F12 pair. Now as a CFOP cuber, you've probably reached now the stage where you're good at the cross and F12, but not good at that transition between. It's quite frustrating how much time you lose when having these lengthy pauses during transition. In fact, as it was for me, this may be one of the fundamental reasons why you aren't sub 10. Finding your first pair in advance does significantly improve your solving speed, but this skill is also quite difficult to develop as it takes a lot of practice. Fortunately, I am here to talk about some of the tips and guidelines I discovered that can help make your learning process much less time consuming. So without further ado, let's get into it. And before we proceed guys, I would just like to have a disclaimer. This video is intended for those who can execute the cross blindfolded, or in other words, those who can plan their entire cross solution comfortably in inspection. If you do not possess this prerequisite skill, then you will not be able to benefit from this video as it will be too complicated. And also, what I'm going to present to you are the tips that I believe I would have significantly benefited from when I was practicing F12 pair prediction. That being said, people come from all sorts of cubing backgrounds and experiences, so you may not find these tips as helpful. However, if you can let me know what tips you discovered or found more helpful by using the form in the description, which I will further discuss in the outro, I can happily create a follow-up video. But anyways guys, let's get into it. Alright, so I first want us to understand when corner pieces are going to be in the top layer when we are inserting a cross edge and I will denote this as base cases. So these are gonna be one move insertions we always use, being the F and R moves, or L moves if you prefer. So whenever I'm doing an insertion, the general rule is that the corners opposite from the edge being inserted will go on the top layer. So let's take a look at this. When I'm doing an F prime, when I'm inserting this edge right here, the corners opposite to it are over here, and they will be on the top layer. It is also important to note the location. So this is gonna go in the back. This is gonna go right here, like that, okay? The same logic applies when we're doing our moves. So let's do it. Let's take a look at this over here. The edge that I'm inserting is here and the two corners that are opposite to that are over here. So they'll end up in the top layer. This one over here and this one over here. And then we can look at R2. So the corners opposite to the edge are over here. This one's going to go in the back, this one's going to go right over here, like that. Okay, so now that you have a good grasp of understanding where corner pieces have to be for them to be in the top layer, we will now discuss the method I have for F12 pair prediction. So the very first step is to find a corner piece that you can use to build an F12 pair. So because I'm solving on white cross, and by the way the solution for this cross is just F prime R, I need to find a white corner piece, so say this one right here. The second step is to determine the last edge whose insertion will affect the piece. So in other words, I need to find the uh, last edge who will affect the location of the piece. So in this case, it's gonna be the, the orange right here. This is gonna be the last edge that will be affecting the location because I will do an F prime and the blue is not gonna affect the location of this anymore because this is no longer in, the, uh, in this face right here where blue can maneuver it. So it's gonna be like that, okay? Now in contrast, this corner piece, the edge that is, the last edge that is gonna be affecting its location is the blue. Because once I insert this orange right here, the uh, corner piece is gonna be over here. And now this is in the face where blue can maneuver it. So the third step is now to determine if that corner piece is in a desired place. Or in other words, ask yourself, will this, will this piece be in the top layer when this last edge is inserted? So if we were to go back to this corner right here, this corner is going to be over here before we insert this blue edge. And then when I'm inserting this blue edge, because this corner piece is in a location that is opposite to the edge, remember that we talked about that the corner piece has to be uh, in these two locations if the edge is over here, then it is going to be in the top layer. And more specifically, it's going to be right here. The location is going to be right here. And then for, let's say this corner piece over here, this uh, green orange corner piece, uh, because the uh, orange is over here when we're inserting it, because this corner piece is opposite to that, it is gonna also end up in the top layer and more specifically over here. Okay, great. So now we will practice this concept through various stages of difficulty. Now the first stage is when you're solving two cross edges. So 
something like this, okay? Now this stage is also great to get a very basic understanding of cube mechanics. So essentially how pieces are affected when certain moves are done. Now while this stage is a bit easy, it's still going to help develop your ability to predict the location of corner pieces and also edge pieces, but I won't explicitly train you on that because I think they're quite easy for you to self-learn, okay? So let's take a look at this scramble right here and my solution for the cross will just be r prime f r prime okay so let's look at this corner right here when i'm doing the r prime this corner piece is not going to be affected and then i'm going to do the f uh, to essentially rotate this block right here 90 degrees so the last edge that's going to be impacting it is this orange right over here because it's also a, it's like attached to this orange so when i'm inserting it's going to be uh, it's going to remain there. Now, is it going to be in a favorable location, right? So when I'm inserting this orange, the orange piece is going to be here once I insert this green, and then the corner piece is here. Once I insert this orange, so bring it down, is this going to be in a favorable location? Well, no, because remember, the corner pieces need to be opposite to the side that we're, to the side that we're inserting. So because the corner piece is rather attached to this edge piece rather than being over here, it will instead be right over here actually. So it will be in the bottom layer specifically right over here like that. Okay. Let's move on to another corner. Let's say this corner right here. So the R prime is not going to do anything. Then I'm going to do an F that which will bring this one up here. And now will the orange uh, be an edge that will be affecting the location of this green, uh, this green uh, red uh, corner piece? Well, no, because this is not in this face right here where the orange will operate. So it can't be maneuvered by the orange. And because this corner piece is again, opposite to where we're inserting this green, it will be in the top layer and more specifically over here. Also, this is actually really easy because this edge piece is right over here. So we can easily predict the F2L case that we're going to get. Now let's look at one more corner just for the sake of it. Let's say, Let's say, let's say this corner right here, okay? So for this corner, I'm gonna do an R prime, which will bring this one down. And then I th and then the last edge that's gonna be insert, that's gonna be impacting it, its location is gonna be the orange. Because once I bring this, once I insert this green right here, this corner piece is gonna be here and this edge piece is gonna be here. And then I have to insert the orange downwards. And because again, this corner is attached to this block, this orange edge piece, rather than being in the opposite locations, it's not going to be in the top layer, right? It's going to end up over here. Okay, awesome. So in your practice of the stage, you're just going to be hand scrabbling various cases where you have to predict your F2L pair when solving two cross edges. After you feel comfortable with that stage, we can then move on to solving three cross edges. Now during the stage, things get a bit more tricky, or as I like to call it, more realistic. This is going to be a better exercise of your ability to determine where corner pieces end up since there are going to be many more moves affecting the location of corner pieces, right? You have three edges to solve. There's going to be a lot more variation. Variation. So let's take a look at something. I'll, I'll create a scramble right now. Let's take a look at something like, um, and then maybe, okay, let's do something like this, okay? So let's start off with this corner piece right here. And by the way, the uh, cross solution that I'm going to do is going to be use the green to insert the orange and then insert the blue at the very end. So something like that where you insert the uh, blue at the very end. Okay. Okay. So we're going to do this corner piece right here. Okay. So I'm going to first do a U, which isn't going to do anything. It's just going to bring this one temporarily, uh, bring this temporarily to the back. And then an R prime is not going to do anything. And then I'm going to do a U prime. So this is going to return uh, as it is, how it is now. And then I'm going to do an F. So this is going to be rotated over here. Now is the last move, last edge that's going to be affecting this corner piece, the orange or the blue. So as of now, I've inserted the green and this edge piece is over here. This corner piece is here. I'm bringing it down. So now this edge, this corner piece is over here, but I have to do a D prime. So now it's going to be away from this face right here, which blue uh, maneuvers. And because of that, it is not going to be 
the last edge is going to be orange that's impacting its location and because it is attached to it attached to the orange it's going to be in the bottom layer okay so it's not going to be very it's not going to be something favorable for us to use for an f12 pair so let's move on let's do let's do this corner right over here so again i'm going to do a u uh, u r prime u prime and that's not going to do anything but the moment i do an f to insert the to insert the green this is going to rotate upwards now that's actually good the green is actually going to be the last edge to impact it because i have now the orange and blue to deal with which is all going to be on this side and this is far away from that and because I'm inserting the green edge over here, and this is op in a location opposite to that. Uh, this corner is going to be on top, more specifically right over here. And because, again, we know that we actually see the edge case right over here, we can easily predict the F12 case that we're going to get. Okay, so that worked out really nicely. That is a winner. But let's just do one more for the sake of it. I'm, I'm going to do this corner right here. So U, R prime. So the U is going to bring this one over here for now. And then R prime is not going to do anything, and then we're going to go back here. So this is this is the state of the cube where you have just how it is, and then you're going to do an F. So you're going to bring this down. Imagine this just rotating 90 degrees clockwise. So this is going to be here, and this corner piece is going to be here. Now, is the last edge that's going to be impacting it the orange or the blue? So once I insert this, this corner piece is going to be here, this edge piece is going to be here, and then I have to do a D prime again. And because now this corner is in this face where the blue will be maneuvering uh, the face, it will be impacted by the blue. The blue will be the last edge piece to impact this location. Now, is it in a favorable location? Because the blue will be over here when we're, uh, when we're going to be inserting it downwards here, and the corner piece is opposite to that, it will be on the top layer, more specifically right over here. And actually funny enough, the edge piece is actually gonna be the same case right over here. You're actually gonna get the exact same F2L case, so it's gonna look like something like this, like that. That's funny how all that works out. But yeah, so that was with three edges. After this stage, then you'll move on to probably what you predicted, four edges. But make sure that those cross solutions are, are easy, relatively easy, and then you can work your way up to practice with much more difficult cross solutions. Now, once you master predicting the location of corner pieces and thus the location of your first F2L pair, then you can move on to actually visualizing its, its specific orientation. So essentially actually being able to predict the F2L case. Now to practice this, you can repeat the exact same procedure of starting off with solving two edges, three edges, and then you get the point. But then uh, you may no, you may think that okay, uh, because I'm you know essentially repeating this procedure twice for location of the F12 pair and then the actual F12 case. Why don't I just try to figure out the uh, location and orientation once when I'm practicing? You can do that. I advise not to because it's a little bit more overwhelming. I think it's just a lot more simpler to first master predicting the location of the F12 pair and also being able to get more familiar with your cube mechanics and then building your way up to being able to predict the actual F2 ca F2L case that you're going to get. Okay? Great. Okay, so now I'll do an example solve with the entire cross solution, which I would consider maybe at around medium difficulty. And this is just to give you guys a little bit more perspective of uh, putting everything together, okay? So this is the scramble right here. And the solution, actually, just one sec. Solution will be this. So I'll be moving the red down here and such so that I can set it up, uh, set up, set up the green when I'm solving the orange and the blue. So it looks like this. Oops, like that. Okay. So let's consult a corner here. Let's consider maybe this corner right here. So I'm first going to do a D prime. That's definitely not going to be affecting this. And then I have to do my insertion of the orange and the blue. When I'm inserting the blue, when I first have to do an F2, because this is going to be over here, this the orange and white edge piece in the corner will be over here. When I'm inserting the blue, this obviously this corner piece is not going to be affected because it's not 
anymore in this face right here. So that means that the orange is going to be the last edge that's going to be affecting the location. And because when I'm when the orange is here and the corner is here, and then I'm inserting the orange, this corner piece will is not opposite to the uh, edge. It's not it's not going to be on the top layer then because it's attached. So that means that it's going to end up right over here, sand, sandwich in between this edge and the blue edge. So like that. Okay. Okay. And then obviously I, I didn't do a D prime, but you get the point. So that means that this edge is not going to do anything for me. Let's look at this edge here. So again, the D prime is not going to do anything. I'm going to do an F2, which is going to bring the blue edge in the corner down here. And then I'm going to insert the blue. So the blue is going to be here and then the corner is going to be there. Orange is not going to do anything. And then I have to do a D prime. Now, is the blue the last edge that's going to be affecting it? Or is perhaps the red going to be the last edge that's affecting it? So when I do a D prime, it's going to take this corner from here to all the way over here. Okay, and because the red is going to be over here where this uh, just imagine the blue being a red this time and because that corner is opposite away from the edge, it's going to be in the top layer here. Okay, and the green is not going to be affecting it. So that means that this is just going to be in the top here and we can probably visualize the case also if the yeah whites here. Okay, yeah. so the case is going to be the white sticker over here, the green sticker on top, and then the red sticker in the back. And then we can easily also determine the edge that we have here. So because I'm inserting when I'm inserting the blue, this edge is going to come up on top here like that. So I can easily figure out the F2L case. And I have to do an L prime U uh, U prime and then L to create the block. So it's going to look like this, the first F2L pair. Then L, L to create the block and then you insert it like that. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So hopefully that gave you an idea of the overall way to tackle the first pair prediction using the concept we discussed. Now you should keep practicing this method and it will definitely, it will definitely pay off. Now let's say you are perhaps in a competition or doing realistic training. In those circumstances, you may not have enough inspection time to go through your cross solution and determine your first pair or the exact F2L case you're going to get. Let's say you're at the stage of taking maybe a minute to accurately predict your F2L pair and its case, and you only have the standard, let's say 15 second, 15 second inspection time. So to help with that, I'm going to list uh, some what I'd say, you can say cheats, if you will, some tricks that can help you transition to F12 smoothly, despite not knowing your exact F12 case. All right, so I'll just use the scramble again as an example, since I actually use this tip for the scramble, and frankly, I wouldn't have been sub 10 without it. So the tip is that if you don't have enough time to predict the F12 case, then just take a step back and just predict the location of the F12 pieces. Honestly, guys, I do this around 50% of the time, and it is a huge lifesaver. Now, the reason why determining the location is so effective is because you at least know the pieces of the F2L pair that you're targeting. So you reduce probably 75% of the time that you would have otherwise been in during that notorious awkward F2L transition phase. So like in this case here, I know that the corner is going to be on the top, right? So I'm expecting a corner to be this corner to be over here, and I know that the edge is also going to be over here. So I'm just going to execute the cross and then look at what the orientation is. So then I, now I know the case and then I can go right into the F2L pair. Now, yes, you still have a slight pause in determining the F2L case, but it is a lot less detrimental than not even knowing which F2L pieces to target. So definitely use this tip when inspection time is running short. Okay, for the next three tips, I'm gonna be referring to this scramble here. So the cross solution I'm gonna first use is gonna look like this. All right. All right, so the second tip I have is that when you're running short on time, to just look at the last cross edge you are inserting and see if that brings any white corners to the top layer. So in this cross solution, the last edge that I'm inserting is gonna be the orange over here. And that means that because I have to do an L2 insertion of the orange, I have to look if there are gonna be white corners either here or here. So in this case, uh, it's gonna be this corner over here 
because once I'm inserting the green and then doing a D, so the corner is going to come here, then I have to do a D prime. The corner is going to be over here, and then I'm going to do an L2 to insert the orange. Okay? And because the white is going to be at the back here, so that means it's going to be at the facing me over here, and then the green, which is going to be at the bottom, is going to be at the top here. Uh, I have the green, white, and red corner piece over here, and the edge piece is just going to be the same how it is right now. So the F2L case then I kind of predicted, I now just have to take out the edge piece and then do uh, for to set up for a three move insert. So overall, the cross solution is going to look like this with the F2L case, and then it, take this out and insert in the back like that. Okay. Now this tip is a bit of a gamble because the last edge may not bring any white corner pieces uh, to the top layer. But from my experience, the tip is still super handy as it has come in clutch countless number of times. So definitely keep this in the back of your mind. Okay, the third tip I have is just to go for a simpler cross solution, even if it is inefficient, that is much easier to visualize the F2L location and exact F2L case. So in this scramble here, uh, an easier scramble could just, sorry, an easier cross solution could just be to insert the red, blue, and the orange edge, and then do a D2 to then insert the green and then align the cross. So when you're doing that, uh, as you work through that, you might figure out that the edge that is going to be the corner piece that's going to be on top is actually going to be this corner piece right here because all the other corner pieces are attached to the are going to be attached to the other edges and it will only be affected this one will only be affected by the green so then you you can figure that out and then actually here you're going to have a block because this edge is going to uh, attach to the corner so the FL case you're going to get is going to be pretty deep it's pretty easy to figure out then so you're going to have the block over here and then you just uh, solve it from there so it's going to look like this like that. Okay, so my final general tip guys is just to set up your own F2L case. So if you know that a corner isn't going to be in the top layer from your cross solution, if you find it beneficial, do that extra move or two in the cross such that the corner does end up in the top layer such that you can have an F2L pair to target. So let's just do the cross solution that I just did now. When I'm doing the, when I'm inserting the red and the blue, what I'll notice is that I'm going to have this a nice attachment of the corner and the edge here. Now, obviously, when I'm inserting the green, I'm th this isn't going to remain in the top layer. This corner is not going to remain in the top layer because it's attached to the green. But if I just do, if I just modify my cross solution, I, in this case, I can't do a U prime just because I'll mess up the orange. But I insert the orange and then do the U prime and then do everything else then it'll be a lot easier and I can go right into my F12 pair just like that. Okay, awesome. Anyways, that's gonna be it for me guys. I hope this was helpful. Predicting your first F12 pair does take a lot of practice, but hopefully these tips will make this process a bit easier for you. But let me know down in the comments or in the forums if there was something that you encountered that was not clear or you had a concern with the method and you would like me to perhaps provide better explanation. What I'm going to do is create a video where I do example solves of me predicting the first pair. So hopefully that will supplement your learning process further. But anyways, let's head out to the conclusion. Hey guys, that's going to be it for me for this video. I hope you found my examples and explanations insightful. Now to help me improve my content to better fit your learning style, I would really appreciate it if you could spare a couple of seconds just to fill out this feedback form and its link is in the description. So here you can let me know what went well, what didn't go well, and what aspects you would like me to include or work on in the future. But anyways guys, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Take care.